What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at gaming and emulation performance on the all new 6th gen iPad mini from Apple. Now this is the new 2021 iPad mini and I picked this up for my wife, but before she gets her hands on it, I figured we'd go ahead and test a few things out. So before we get started here, I do want to mention a few things. I do understand that this is pretty much overpriced. This is the 64 gigabyte model and it's $499. We have no way to upgrade the storage on it unless you buy a higher end model. And to tell you the truth, I've always been a fan of the iPad Mini's form factor. I do wish that this was Apple's cheapest iPad, but unfortunately they do upcharge on these. But the new model here is using the latest Apple A15 chip. It's a little underclocked from the iPhone 13. And to my surprise, they still include a charger and a cable with this unit. Along with the A15 chip, we have a 5-core Apple GPU and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Like I mentioned, this is the 64 gigabyte model. It's the cheapest one on the market right now. And in order for me to get these emulators installed on this device, I didn't have to do any jailbreaking. I used something called Alt Store. Basically, you sign it with your own Apple ID, and I've installed RetroArch so we can emulate a bunch of different systems, and PSP. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, Dolphin iOS isn't available for the latest version of iOS that's on this iPad mini, but in the future, as soon as that becomes available, I will be doing another video. I got a good feeling that it'll actually handle GameCube and Wii quite well as soon as we can get that app working with this version of iOS. If you're interested in checking out a full review on the new 6th gen iPad mini, there's tons of them online. Just do a quick Google search, but in this video we're just going to run some benchmarks, we're going to test out some games and some emulation. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the benchmarks. First up, Geekbench 5 coming in with a really strong single core score of 1591. Multi-core 4607, still looking really good for a small form factor tablet like this. When it comes to GPU performance, I chose to use 3 d Mark Wildlife, this test Vulcan performance. We got an overall score of 9492. Just to give you a little comparison here, with the Snapdragon 888 Plus, we get around a 5871, and with that Snapdragon 888, 5,089. Those are on the newer Red Magic gaming phones. So when it comes to GPU performance, at least in this benchmark, I mean, it's beaten that Snapdragon out by leaps and bounds. And the final benchmark I ran was the iOS version of Antutu. We got a 784,050. So really not that bad at all when it comes to Antutu. So now I'm going to jump right into some gaming. And the first one we're going to test here is Call of Duty Mobile. So far, it's been really smooth. I've gone into the settings and just maxed everything out. This is definitely running at 60, if not a little bit higher. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a really good experience. It's a very well-optimized game, and even on Android, this works out really well on lower-end devices at around 30 FPS. So I expected this game would run well. By the way, with the newer versions of iOS, we do have support for Xbox and PlayStation controllers. I'm personally not a big fan of sports, but I saw this on the App Store and it looked absolutely amazing. This is NBA 2K21. Don't judge me, I'm not familiar with football, so I have no clue how to play this, but the game looks absolutely amazing for a mobile game. And this wasn't really to test performance, I mean it's actually running really well, it's just a game that looked really good and I wanted to test it out. So one thing I really wanted to test here was video over USB Type-C. The new 6th gen iPad mini uses USB Type-C and it does video out. Unfortunately, it's not going to match up with the aspect ratio of the screen you have it on if you're using a 16x9 monitor or TV. But I still think it looks really good and you could always cast this to another Apple device if you wanted to to get that screen up. But personally, I like being hardwired. That way I have no lag whatsoever. And by the way, I've connected a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. I haven't run into any issues here. Now, when I'm searching for a new Android device, be it a tablet or a phone, one of the main things I look for is HDMI over USB Type-C or display over USB Type-C. I'm really glad that they brought it to the new iPad mini because in the past it was only available on the iPad Pro. Now, before we move over to the emulation testing, there's one more game I want to test and I figured I'd just go ahead and do it while we're connected over HDMI and that's going to be Genshin Impact. This is a harder game to run, especially for lower-end Android devices. I'm wondering how it's going to perform here. And if you notice, as soon as I started this app up, it kind of gave me this round border. It actually looks pretty cool. Genshin Impact on iOS does have controller support, and I really hope they bring this to Android soon. I really hate playing with uh, you know, a third-party app to map the controls or even the touchscreen. Playing this on a device like this with a controller just makes it a whole different game. 
So far, the game's been running really well. I'm at the highest setting, 60 FPS, but there is one option that I disabled in the graphics setting, and that's Bloom. With Bloom on, I did notice that I had a couple stutters every once in a while, and even with it off, you will see it, but overall, this is working really, really well, especially at highest settings for Genshin Impact. Now, if you've ever tried to run this on basically any mobile device, you know really how hard it can be. Most of the time, with mid-range chips and even high-range chips, some of those settings have to be dropped down to medium, but this is kind of trucking right through it. I know cloud gaming is hit or miss with a lot of people, and including myself. I mean, some days I'll start up the uh, Xbox Game Streaming, formerly known as xCloud, and it works great. Other days, it really, really lags, but today it's looking like it's doing pretty decent. We still have that input lag because we're streaming this, but if you did want to use Stadia, GeForce Now, or xCloud, you could do it, and you could also even do it over HDMI. All right, so now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos, some emulation testing. Like I mentioned, I've got PPSSPP, the standalone version, and the latest version of RetroArch installed. I used AltStore. This is not a jailbroken iPad whatsoever. Basically, AltStore takes your own Apple ID or your own Apple developer account if you create one and signs these apps for you. A couple things that I can't get working in here right now with the latest version of RetroArch and the version of iOS this iPad's running, N64. I just couldn't get any game to load. But most of the other stuff is booting up and running at full speed. We're going to start off light here. We'll go with GBA Sonic Advance 3. So I'm using an Xbox One controller, but like I mentioned, if you have a PS4 or a PS5 controller, it'll also work. The controls that you're seeing on screen can be easily disabled inside a RetroArch. I just left them on. You can play this with the touchscreen. FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and I knew that Game Boy Advance was going to run well. So let's go ahead and take it up a notch. We're not going to go too far with it. But here's some PS1 running, using RetroArch with a PC SX Rearm Core, running great here with DOA. And all of my games are running from the internal storage on the iPad. All I had to do was plug in a hard drive or a USB drive, and you can transfer your ROMs over to the internal storage using the iOS File Manager. I also wanted to test at least one arcade game. I'm using the FBA Neo Core. This is Altered Beast, and remember, this is the main version or the arcade version of Altered Beast. This isn't the Genesis version. And finally, for RetroArch on this iPad, we have some Sega Saturn. I really wish I could have tested some N64, but unfortunately I just couldn't get that core working. Sega Saturn runs amazingly. I tested about four different games. This is one of my favorites, and it's actually a harder one to emulate, so I figured we'd take a look at it. Sega Rally Championship running at full speed on the new iPad Mini. This is looking really good. I mean, we get amazing Sega Saturn performance out of this little A15 chip. Now, when it comes to PSP emulation on this iPad Mini, I mean, it can handle anything at 5x resolution. I've got the Vulcan back end going here. We'll just go into settings real quick using that Xbox controller, and we're at 5x, just show you that we are here. I'll just back up, we'll start an easier one to run, get into some gameplay, and then we'll test one of the harder ones to emulate at 5x with that Vulcan back end. Here's Tony Hawk Underground 2 Remix, not the hardest one to run, but at 5x it can give some of these ARM chips a run for its money. We're at 30 FPS, it originally ran at 30 FPS, there are hacks that you could use to get this to go up to 60. I haven't noticed any kind of dips like this, and I'm sure if I put that hack on it would run at 60 all day, because even with the harder ones to emulate, like Ghost of Sparta and Chains of Olympus, we're getting full speed here. When it comes to Vulcan performance on this A15, it's definitely some of the best that I've seen out of an ARM chip, and I really do wish that Apple would just let us go ahead and start sideloading stuff. If that happened, a lot of emulation developers would definitely jump on board given the power that these little chips can put out. So overall, the new 6th gen iPad mini definitely has some power. I wasn't expecting it to run everything as well as it did that we saw on this video, but as you saw, I mean, it did really, really well. 
To tell you the truth, I'm a huge fan of this form factor. I wish we could get an Android tablet like this from a manufacturer with something like the Snapdragon 888. Even the Snapdragon 870 would be good enough, at least for me. But I do love this smaller form factor tablet. And like I mentioned, I do wish that we had a way to really sideload stuff on here without having a jailbreak or use the alt store. If Apple ever comes around to it, which I doubt they ever will, then an iPad like this would definitely be a viable option for emulation. And I'd say within the next two years, we're going to see at least the PS3 and Wii U emulator come over to ARM or Android. And with the power that these things are putting out right now in three to four years time, I mean, we'd be able to run basically everything we want on a tablet like this. But unfortunately, Apple has everything locked down. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. As soon as we can get the Dolphin emulator up and running on the latest version of iOS, I will make another video. But I got a great feeling that it's going to handle it quite well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always. Thanks for watching.